You're watching and listening to Chris and Lester to Live Die TV on YouTube and your favorite podcasts. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester Come on, you foxes! Like and subscribe now. Right, Chris. All right there. All right at the back. How are you doing? How the devil are you all? It's getting close to Christmas. Yeah, it is. It's it's beginning to feel a little bit like Christmas. <sighs> And I'm not going to say that we're all playing like Muppets at the moment, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> have, you been, have you watched us lately? I tell you what, Leicester City, they can't play for 90 minutes. They can't play for a full 90 minutes. But then again, Steve Leinitz only predicts the game for the first 89. So I kind of get it, you know. <laughs> this is where you can watch us. And if you're on the podcast, where you can listen to us. <laughs> On your favourite podcast platform, or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow, and join in now. Indeed, and talking of uh, podcasts, I've got to say this: it 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 blows my mind. This we started doing podcasts a little bit behind when we did the. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's just there for Steve. Hey, what can I say? Um, it suits him, I think. We'll come on to that in a minute. Did I did I inadvertently slip that in there? Oh, what a shame. Um, yeah, we've only been doing podcasts since the seventeenth of November, and we have got over thirteen thousand plays, guys. It's, I mean, it either means that Brad, me, Steve, and Craig, and Julian, everybody else is that ugly, you don't want to look at us, or you just prefer to listen to us. Um, but no, we know podcasts are preferred by some people. 13,000 in just over a year. It is totally amazeable. Thank you so much, guys. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, it is the Prediction League, and we're going to concentrate on that because I'll tell you what, seven players out for the... Uh, um, Napoli game. I hope for the remainers they don't forget any of the passports. And I don't know, they haven't named which seven players they were, but apparently they had all been to number 10 Downing Street. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen it's time, time for the main for the event main of, the of the evening. evening. 60, minutes 60 minutes of football, football fun, fun and banter, 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 banter with Chris, with Chris and Lester Till I Die TV. TV. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get, get ready, ready to rumble. Two
Terry, good evening. How the devil are you? Got his pen ready to fill in the crib sheet. I tell you what, if, if you're that desperate that you have to crib off us three, you're going to be bottom of the league, I'll tell you. But you'd be better off following Norwich. Um, <laughs> and no COVID jokes that Casper will not get it. He doesn't catch anything. I tell you what, we, I did a post on Twitter earlier. Uh, should we play Schmeichel or Ward? And Ward is winning quite easily at the moment. It is the prediction show. Let's bring them both in. Live from his local Spearmint Rhino. Should have been in his underwear, but he's certainly in his uniform. Steve Linux, good evening, sir. Good evening. Did you did you volunteer to do that, uh, that you'd be in your underwear for that one particular game, knowing that your choice probably wouldn't come through? No, no, no. I said that I'd wear it because I, I, I really fancy them. I think they'd done a job on uh, Chelsea the week. Oh, no, was it Man United the week before? Yes, yeah. This was Watford, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought they'd do the same again, but you never know. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I think I think this this look suits you. <laughs> I mean, you I got the story, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say that, it, that it, it's, it's my body. Um, <laughs> no, in my dreams, I couldn't get away with wearing one of those either. But I said that is definitely a look you can carry off, sir. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I think this man probably could carry it off as well because it might have actually been his body. Brad, good evening, sir. Evening, mate. Well, I mean, it's hairy enough to be mine, but it's certainly not my body. I can tell you that. <laughs> no. Um, I, uh... Just just, just some breaking news. Well, I don't know how breaking it is because the phone's always a bit behind on the actual breaking news, but Tottenham's game against um, Batiste tomorrow is no longer going ahead due right. to the COVID outbreak at the club. So, I don't know. It depends who it is that's out for Leicester. Obviously, we haven't heard names, but there is a possibility that the game will not go ahead for Leicester as well. We'll, we'll. we'll wait and see. It might be a blessing in disguise if it doesn't at the moment, given our form, but I wish everybody a speedy recovery, even if it is Tottenham. <laughs> Indeed. And that won't be echoed by Steve. We know that. But, um, <laughs> but uh, can I just say, guys, I think, Steve, I think you and me could do well this week. Because Brad, looking at his Twitter conversations, is pissed. So oh. I, don't think he can, uh, I don't think he'll do very well this week. Um, what do you mean? Being, being drunk is the only reason I'm where I am. <laughs> Are you nipping? How you doing, sir? Um, thanks for joining us. Well. Um, I believe he's in India. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, oh, he set the tone for tonight's show, Jeff. He always does. He always does, Terry. No matter how low the, uh, the 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 tone is, he always manages to take it lower. But then again, I've always I've always sort of said I set my standards very low, and I always fail to come up to them. So I guess I can't complain. Um, Brad, um, what have I got for you here? I just think, really, we have... Th thanks very much to Brad, because we've actually got a sponsor on tonight's show. And I, I, I didn't, you know... It, obviously, any money that comes in helps. And if you want to donate via the dollar sign on, on the YouTube uh, channel, please do. But we have actually got a sponsor for tonight's show. So thank you, Brad. And, uh, uh, and here we go. Matty Cup, I believe it was. Had a shot. Had a shot. That, that's 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 getting edited out, isn't it? That's getting the YouTube. <laughs> Had a <laughs> shot. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was there. They even called it in the bloody clip. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it, it is on TikTok as well. If you want to get over to LITD TV on TikTok, you can. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Brad's got most of the uh, videos up on there. Um. So last week, uh, guys, let's bring um, let's bring the the, the the chart in mixed mixed fortunes. It's, it has to be said. Um, let me just see if I can bring that. I'm going to have to get rid of. I'm going to have to get rid of my Santa, aren't I? Because he's got his hand right over that. Um, it's my face. It's all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> silver linings, Brad. Silver linings. There we go. Um, so last week's um, it's all getting. I mean, Steve, what we're going to do, Brad? Brad is getting further ahead. 
He's on 64, and you and me on 58 and 57 there. Yeah, it, it'll change. He's just won a, a little run at the moment. but uh, you know. I might not read the predictions this week, let you guys catch up. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just getting, he's just getting the games where I've got the hatred for Arsenal and uh, Tottenham. That's where he's picking. Yeah, every week, mate. Two every week. I can't wait but, until they play each other. I don't know what no, no, you're going to do on that one. He'll be going um, for a draw, and I lost to both. <laughs> yeah. Um, I checked something earlier. Do you know when this is going to be game sixteen? In the previous 15, with Steve and before Steve, we, we haven't actually got a week where we have got some or somebody's got every single game right. I think nine is the most we've got, which was sort of similar to last week. We've never got all 10 games right by anybody. There's always one that sort of missed out. So that, that's what I'm setting you. Steve, are you up for that? I'm up for that, yeah. You're up for that. I'm um, not predicting... Spurs to lose to Norwich's mate, that might help. <laughs> Nip Nippon's in London, isn't he? I don't know. I know. I heard at one point, yeah, it's he's in New Delhi. He's in. He's been. I think I'm pretty sure he's been going over India in that sort of area. I heard that. So oh. he's up, he's up nice and late or early. He or is. If you are Nippon, nice of you to be up late and to, and to come in. Uh, he's probably still on his on his time. You know, UK time clock. I would imagine. Nippon, uh, Nippon, have you found a Tesco's yet? That's the important thing. <laughs> I want the Nippon's tour video. I want the Steve, Nippon's tour Steve video. probably won't know Nippon very well, but he, he, he does like when he's on the show. He, he's like a travelling reporter, isn't he, Brad? And yeah. um he, right. yeah, <laughs> you suddenly got shows and he's in different restaurants or on the tube. He uh, you should do a travel blog, Nippon. That would that would be really, really good. Really good. But uh right, let's have a look at this week's then. We're gonna go for the ten. Steve's up for it out you are as well, Brad. We've got to do it before the end of the season anyway. Um Brentford Watford. Brentford, who are sat in thirteenth, um, a couple of places behind us. They've won one in the last five. It's kind of um, uh, reality check time for them. Uh, they are sliding down a bit, but not as much, I've got to be honest with you, as Watford. And I was very surprised when I checked Watford out earlier on in the week. They're actually in 17th place. Um, they got that win against Man United, but um, and they got the win against Everton. But those are the only two, po uh, two lots of points, uh, Steve, that Claudio's got. He's, he's, you know, and he's lost three in a trot. Um, is he is he the man to, to keep Watford up? I think so. I think Watford, uh, you know, they're never going to be up the top. They're never going to be above halfway. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're the team that will take points off everybody. And I think uh, it's games where you're not expecting, like we did the Man United game, that they'll pick up the points. Mm. I, think, uh, I think he's finding his feet at the moment. And uh, I think once he, once he finds out, you know, they'll, they'll go on a little decent run again. So, are you going you going for Watford or Brentford here, Steve? I'm going to go for Watford on this one you because I think Watford um, they attack more when they're away from home. Hmm. Uh, so, I think you know uh, the way Brentford's been playing and letting goals in. I think uh, he's playing into the hands of Watford. So, I think Watford will do all right against Brentford. Really? Brad, uh, were you surprised at Brentford's fall from grace? No, not really. When you consider the opposition they had, I mean, they were very unfortunate against us. They were quite unfortunate mm. against Chelsea. And we've seen it. We had it when we came up and we had that mm. nice bounce of a start um, that you kind of hit a patch that you have to dig yourself out of. They've kind of been doing that, really. In fact, they were to my knowledge, are quite unlucky at the week, you know, to weekend to have not got a got full points. Um and I think Brentford are going to win this game. I think Steve's right. Uh Watford do go at it more, but even Leicester can score four past Watford when they leave gaps at the back and an actual organised team that look like they're in some form of form, I think will do a better job um against Watford. So I, I just think Brentford will will win this um, probably quite comfortably as well, to be fair. I I am going to st try and stick to my uh, long ball predictions. 
Um, it, it worked for me before. Um, I think, I mean, these are two teams that have come up. Um, what I mean, Watford, I, I was surprised when I checked to see that they, they dropped down to 17th. I mean, they were only in, ele- they were in 11th when Claudio came in. Um, I don't think he's the man to keep them up at all. Um, you know, we saw that with Fulham. It's not the sort of manager he is. Um, Brentford, though, they are on a, you know, a, a, it depends which Brentford turn up. You know, lost, drawn, won, lost, drawn. Maybe they drew the drew a win, but I'm going to go for a draw for this one. Um, to, to, you know, last season's championship teams. And, um, yeah, I can just I can just see it being a shared points there. Uh, uh, as, as, as Jeff said, um uh, Dilly Dong to get a point here. Okay, so we're now looking at Man City versus Wolves. Man City, top of the pile, five out of five um, in the last five. Only conceded nine goals, 20 32 scored. Um, coming up against the Wolves team that um, are sat in eighth still with 21 points, uh, won one in five and drawn two. I'm actually, Steve, having to re. I mean, I've I've gone with Chelsea to win the league, but it's just something about Man City, isn't there? Man City are like Liverpool at the moment. They're they're unstoppable. But I think Wolves are a team that can go for draws and get draws. I think they'll make it hard for City. If Mm. City don't score in the first half, you know, you've got to fancy Wolves to to see out a a, a draw. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for a draw on this one. Oh, brave, brave man. You remember now, you've started something last week, Steve. You've got to, at the end of the day, you're going to have to pick a um, a tie that you're going for to, uh, to turn up in your underwear. <laughs> so um, don't, don't forget, we'll come back to you on that one. Brad? Yes. Draw or is it going to be Man City all the way? I mean, Steve makes some Steve makes some good points, but um, I just feel that Man City are too good for this occasion. Wolves were unfortunate against Liverpool, but Liverpool really weren't at their best. Um, but Man City always seem to find a way around this um, around this period. Uh, so I just think Man City will get a get a win easy here. Uh, I think it'd be fairly comfortable three points. I must admit, I um, we know Manchester City. You know they've lost; they have actually lost two this season already. And I can see probably Wolves nicking the first goal, but I think it's like you know, as I say, don't don't poke the uh, beehive, don't they? And I think uh, if that happens against Wolves, I think Man City will just come out. And I I've got to agree with you, Brad. Um, I'm going to go for a Manchester City win on this one, which is the early kickoff on the Saturday, obviously live on BT Sports. Um, how many are Southampton going to win by, Steve, against Arsenal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to shock you, and I'm going to go for Southampton. I no, were... you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were unlucky uh, the weekend. Uh, I think they're starting to uh, find a bit of form. And, you know, they're a team, again, that like to play away from home because I think the pressures are mm. often uh, from the home fans. Um, yeah, Arsenal are too predictable. They're like Man City, they're like Chelsea, they're like Liverpool. He's trying to clone himself, to, you know, to be the Man City manager. So um, I, I'm hoping Southampton doing 2-0. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love the fact that you 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 just we're not going to change you are we we're going to be uh, be it for the rest of the rest of the season but I love it because it does give me a chance to play this uh, to be fair your next two fixtures um, I'm cooling a go for the two teams because I cannot stand Arsenal and I cannot stand, <laughs> and I cannot stand Tottenham so but. I love it, Steve. And now I'm never going to get bored of playing that. So you're going for a Southampton win. Um, Brad, Arsenal so unpredictable, aren't they? No, they're really predictable now. We've got our Arsenal back, lads. They're back to Banter FC. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. I mean, I was piddled off to a £1.5 million 
waste of garbage came back and scored a screamer. But I'm not even asked about that. Um, I'm actually going to back Steve on this one with him. I honestly think Southampton are going to win this. It's at home. It's Southampton. Banter FC. Obama who is back. So, you know, let's, let's, let's see that continue with Southampton. I think Steve's been banished to the bathroom. Has he, has he gone? I think he's, he's only travels. He's trying to do a nipping. <laughs> he's been sent out. He's, he's, been a, he's been a very naughty boy. <laughs> but no, but honestly, Southampton were really unfortunate against Brighton. They've been quite decent over the last three or four games. And, and, and Arsenal are back to themselves. A man that can't put the cones out in the right mm. direction. So I'm honestly thinking Southampton will win this. This, this will continue to be a miserable month for Arsenal fans. Not a problem. Um, Scott there is just catching up with us. Good evening, Scott. How are you? And Jeff says Gunners to win this one. Um, so you've gone for the win. Uh, I'm actually going to go for a draw on this one because Southampton, they're just not... I mean, they've, only, they've not won in four... They have managed to get a couple of draws, obviously the one against ourselves uh, the, the other night. Um, but like you say, Arsenal, they win a few, they lose a few. They win a few, they lose a few. But I can see this one uh, this one being a tight affair. Well, say tight, I've gone for 2-2. Two, two, so I think this one is going to be uh, all square. Um, Steve, are you back with us? Comfy, have you <laughs> found somewhere that, yeah. that you're not going to be chucked out of? <laughs> I'm about to move now. I'm in the bedroom now. <laughs> We're making our way slowly to the toilet. You're all right. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Cluedo, everybody. It was Steve Linux <laughs> with the candlestick in the bedroom. <laughs> so we are uh, we are looking at Chelsea versus Leeds. Uh, Leeds, they're, they're, they're up to 15th. They, they got a good win at Palace. I know that was a, a fairly decent win, but it is their only win in five. Uh, the, the, it was all square with Brentford, much to um, Steve's annoyance last week. Uh, and, and Chelsea, well, you know, surprise loss, or is it a surprise loss to West Ham? Um, I, 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 I mean, it was a surprise to me, but, the, the, you know, they've only won two in five, Chelsea. Is this going to be a tough game for Chelsea or are we going to see Chelsea back to form, Steve? Um, depending if they've got any injuries for the, their play last, last night. They won last night, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, they drew. They drew oh, three all. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Even better then. Um, I thought, I'm hoping Bamford's back uh, for Leeds. I mm. think he, uh, you know, he's, he's the threat up front. Um I think they've got a bit stale, Chelsea. I think they're losing the uh, the attacking thing they had before. They're trying to they're trying to play too much, and I think uh, yeah, I fancy I fancy Leeds to get something here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a Leeds win. You're gonna go for the Leeds? Wow. Okay. You you uh, you're the evil Knievel of the uh, prediction world, Steve. Um, <laughs> You, you, which way are you going to go off the fence on this one, uh, Brad? Are you going to agree that uh, with Jeff it's got to be a Chelsea win or or Steve uh, with the Leeds win? You know what? Just just to quote a little song that was that, that's infamous to a lot of people. You know, speak, Steve goes on a nice little run and then he goes and spoils it all by saying something stupid <laughs> like Leeds will win. <laughs> Leeds are in a relegation scrap, mate. Leeds, Leeds are heading only one way for a battle of the bottom against the richest club in the world to see who stays in the Premiership and who goes down. I don't care that Bamford's back. Bamford won't do anything in this game. In fact, I can see Leeds getting absolutely torn apart by Chelsea. Chelsea played a game that was essentially a dead rubber. It, I mean, for God's sake, Timo Werner scored two goals. How much of a dead rubber is it if he's scoring for you? Now, nah, two sure get him rocking again. They'll get back on track. Um, maybe it has slightly dampened my expectations on them being the dark horses to win the league, but still a long way to go. We'll, we'll see how the next four or five games go for the likes of Man City, Chelsea, and Liverpool in that regards. But Chelsea won't lose this. If they do lose this, then they're not winning the title. It's as simple as that. You can't lose to a team struggling to stay up and expect to win the Premiership like that. It's just not. No. 
it's not yeah. what you do if you're, if you're going to beat a target at all, especially when you consider the com- competitiveness and the standard that the likes of Man City and Liverpool have shown over the last five or six seasons of the points you need to win a title. So, yeah, Chelsea have to win this game, more or less. So, yeah. No, yeah. I, uh, I'm in total agreement with you on that one. I've got it as a 3-0 for Chelsea. I, can't, I, I think they're back and um, Leeds are away from home. And I just think uh, it, it could it almost get him embarrassing. I mean, I, I actually was going to, to, to give uh, Steve a couple of bonus points if he did go through with his wearing his underwear. But I'll give you a couple of bonus points, Brad, if you promise not to sing again. OK, deal. Because <laughs> you know where he's going to end up. Yeah. Um uh-huh. Steve, Liverpool, um, they are second in the table. They're, they're actually doing better than I thought they would be. Um, they, they lost again to West Ham. I mean, West Ham are, are knocking it out of the ballpark, not beating the, the, the so-called big six this season. But, you know, they, they annihilated Arsenal. The same with Southampton, same with Everton. And then they see the struggle against Wolves. It is the return... Well, if, if last week it was Pupil versus the Master, uh, Gerard versus Rogers, his big return to Liverpool. Um, he's had a great start at Villa. Can he can he carry it on? I don't think he'll carry on against Liverpool. I think he'll make the same mistake he did against Leicester. He'll try and uh, stop Liverpool from playing and he won't concentrate on attacking. He'll try and keep it, you know, the score... Score down or score level as long as he can, and yeah. um, I think Liverpool they get they're scoring from all over the pitch. I think they'll I think they'll win quite easy Liverpool. Brad, how what what are your thoughts on that one? They seem a bit split in the chat, Scott and Jeff. They've gone either well, way. Well, to be honest with you, Gerard seemed really annoyed at the lack of intensity behind Villa in the first half against us. In fact, that's probably what ultimately cost them going a goal behind originally and only coming in at half-time one all. I'm not getting into the debate about the foul on Casper or not. Not. It's not worth getting into. But he looked really animated. We've talked upon Rogers and that, haven't we, Chris, about his lack of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when they were playing the higher intensity and pressing Leicester, um, they seem to do a lot better. It, you know, they seem to mix it up well. They seem to uh, attack less. They get their foothold and again get themselves on uh, in front, and then actually look really comfortable sitting ten or so yards off Leicester, as if to say, "Well, we know how you play your game. Come at us." And Liverpool like to just try and be as relentless as possible and get as many goals as possible. So when it gets to the last 10, 15 minutes, it doesn't really matter if a team gets through and starts to wake up and create chances. The result then is already done and dusted. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to go for, you know, a little bit of a a Christmas miracle, a little bit of a a fairy tale here. And I'm actually going to go for a Villa win. I think Villa shot the system. It just, you know, out of all the things, Steven Gerrard, failed to do at Liverpool was winning the Premiership. Wouldn't it be weird if he started the, the reason and the downfall towards Liverpool's charge for a second title? Be serious, man. You cannot be serious! Hey, it sounds like you are. Like I'm not going for a Norwich beating Liverpool here. I'm going for a Villa on form, mate. You, know, you can speak <laughs> to John McEnroe where the mistletoe should go. <laughs> I'm trying to say that out loud, not in the end. I, I, well, I'm, I'm agreeing with Steve. Uh, I, 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 I get where you're coming from, but I just can't see anything other than a, a Liverpool win. I think, I think they're just going to sort of teach him a lesson uh, on, on that. And uh, I, I've actually gone for two nil Villa win. So um, had it been at Villa, who knows? But now I think at Liverpool, it. it Stephen Gerrard will enjoy the first minute and I'm sure we'll get plenty of cheers and everything. And then after that, it'll be, you know, here's how you do it. Uh, here's how you do it, Stephen. Talking of Norwich, um, Steve's favourite team here. Um, it's all very tight at the bottom and always feels wrong when I say that. But bottom three, all on 10 points. Norwich, um, they had that little blip, got a couple of draws, but they, they, they lost to Tottenham. Um playing um Manchester United who have got Wreck It Ralph there in charge. They've won the last two. Uh, and I think I think the, the Ralph was in charge even when he wasn't, if if you know what I mean, Steve. I think he was uh, he was making the decisions. 
and he wants, I believe, the job full time and just doesn't want to be into him and then move up. But um, th this is this is just going to be an away win for United, isn't it? No, I'm going to go for Norwich on this one. I think uh, small ground. Oh, well, what, uh, what, 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 sorry? Yeah, my passionate, <laughs> passionate crowd, small ground. The name Manchester United going to Norwich. I think it's going to G Norwich up. Um, and I think, uh, you know, he's still got his problems at Man United. I don't think he's going to... I think he's going to play more of the squad that hasn't been in the team lately than the ones he's got. So, yeah, I fancy Norwich on this one. I'm going to go for Norwich. Do you think, do you think it deserves this, Brad? <laughs> Play the macros, I mate. Keep them going. How many you go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think we'll beat that one. Um, but then again, this is Steve has pulled it back. Do you know, it was, it was he, he when he took over as the guest. The guests were quite way behind, and he has caught me up. So maybe I shouldn't be laughing at him. Um, is this the one where if Norwich do this, Steve, you're going to come on in your underwear? Um, I don't think it'll be a surprise. I think uh, you know uh, the Premier League is like um, yeah, it's 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 a mystery, it's a mystery league, and I don't think mm. any club in there, bar Liverpool and Man City at the moment, are, are certain winners. So you know, I think it's the best time to play Man United. So I really think with with their crowd and the small ground, I think they'll do Man United. Do you agree with that, Ron Brad? No. No, 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 Look, no, I, that's I, a no, I, then, I, is it? I, I, yeah, I'm sitting on the fence, mate. I couldn't tell if you'd agree with him or not. No, I have my team's uh, boldness, and I'm not talking about the lack of hair. I want about his ambitions to big with for big <laughs> predictions. Uh, it's worked for you in the past, even I, you know, I wouldn't put it past this crazy season for that sort of result to, to happen, but Ralph has had an amazing effect at Manchester United. I mean, apparently he's been helping not just the first team, but he's been training with the under-19s and 23s, coaching them, greeting himself to them, really diving into this role head first. And you don't have such a diverse effect at a club from what they were literally after that Watford game to what they are now. It's a completely different breed of animal for United. So for me... I'm just going for a Manchester United win. If this was under Oli, I wouldn't be so, you know, against backing Steve's prediction, but they just look a different animal. They play a style of football now. It's 4-2-2-2, two, 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 so they're a bit more expansive going forward. There's some players that are back on form. It turns out Fred actually is Brazilian, according to some United fans. It's not been forthcoming since he's joined them, but I just think this is too much for even Dean Smith uh, at Norwich to get through. Um, so, yeah, United are winning this. All I can say is is, is one word, Brad, and that's ditto. I, I can't argue with you all. I admire, I do admire Steve's boldness, like you say, um, but I, I just can't, I can't say anything other than the United win here. I think, I think Dean, I think he's a good appointment for Norwich, um, but I think he needs to, he, he did a, to go down to come back up stronger, if, if, if that makes sense. Um, and that is all the Saturday games. Um, we then move on to the Sunday, but let me just remind you, there's a little game going on tomorrow night, hopefully.
I'm not going to lie. I'm glad Andrex are sponsoring the show tonight because I think I'm going to be using up tons of their product tomorrow night. Um, fingers crossed it'll go ahead. Just as a, a sort of a, it, obviously it's not part of the uh, of, of the uh, point system here, but is is it good, Steve, as a player going into a game that you where you know a win will 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 literally do it, rather than where we could play for a draw and still go through top and what have you. I mean, we'll still go through with possibly with a draw, depending on the there's so many um, uh, options that that can happen. But as a player, knowing that. Yeah, as long as we win, we are through as top of the group and we, we don't get... Is, is that better for you as a player? Oh, God, yeah. I think uh, every time you put on the shirt and you go on the, on the pitch, you, you you know, you want to win the game. Um, yeah. I think, again, you know, I can't keep slagging Brendan Rodgers off. I can't keep slagging Leicester off. But you don't know which Leicester's going to turn up. Mm. And the last few games, which is so annoying for me and so frustrating, is that the guys look like they've been told to play a certain way and they're not changing it. When the game yeah. dictates when the game dictates for you to change it and do something like off the off the off the cuff or do something there, Leicester don't seem to do that. You know, I keep watching them and they, they just stand in, in two lines and I think they're looking at each other. Most of the game, if you look at if you study the game, they're looking at each other to say, Well, do I go? Do you go? And mm. that's where the team, that's where the teams seem to be playing through them. They're just playing through the lines, the two lines, and that's the worrying thing for me at the moment. Brad, I'm I'm just, I'm just glad we've got European football one way or another because the other two teams can't catch us. Um, I'd, I'd I'd have preferred to obviously maybe have had a couple of more points gap so that the realism of us going through. Um, or um, it is, it is, you know, would be better because it look when this group started, top two was the target. Um, mm. I think that'd be the same for Napoli. I think Napoli more ideally would be looking towards top in the group, but essentially getting through to the next round or the round after of the Europa League what well, it, it is the overall goal. Um, but the way the groups worked out and the way the points dictate, a draw probably won't be enough. Uh, the only way it would be enough is if the other game draws, because thankfully mm. our head-to-head -head record against uh, Liga and Spartak is is is, is yeah. better. So yeah. that's the only way we would go for I it. Mean, these, seven, these seven players that are out, but it would just be like Leicester to, oh, to go God, so, and win, oh, wouldn't it? Barcelona are going to be in the Europa League. I want us to win now. I don't want Barcelona. Barcelona have lost. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, like I say, typical of Leicester, like I say, we've got, we've, let's say, seven first teamers out. We put a load of that, you know, younger players in. We'll go out and win and we'll go through top of the group. We'll not have to go into the playoffs. That would be so typical Leicester. But, yeah, it would, um, it would be. Yeah. I don't want us coming second yeah. now. I've just heard that Barcelona have been knocked out of the Champions League. In the oh, are they are definitely league. out, are they, Barcelona? They are now in the Europa League. They have finished third in their group, according to my friends Ooh. that just popped up on my chat. Ooh, so that's not no. the second. Because could you imagine that? Leicester taking on Barcelona. That's not how we had imagined it, would it? Well, the, the, is the argument, Steve. What as, as a player, would you sooner... Play, I mean, to play Barcelona would be great, and you don't know we could beat them. We could, but chances are we'd probably lose. Or as a player, would you say no? I want to finish top and avoid Barcelona and 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 not have to play another two games. I think Barcelona they're they're having the same trouble as Manchester United and the same as Tottenham. I think if mm. I was a professional player now, this is the right time to play Barcelona because yeah. Barcelona are not the force they used to be. Uh, you can see that in their league position. You can see it in the players that are coming to the club or are still at the club, and I think that I think they've lost the Messi mag uh, ma the magic, and I think uh, yeah. it's wrong to get rid of um, Suarez as well, and um, they've they've never been able they'll never be able to replace those two. So yeah. me now, I think it'd be the the right time to play Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Well, um, <laughs> it makes me more nervous for tomorrow now. It's definitely going to be squeaky bum time. Rennie, good evening, sir. How the devil are you? I hope you are well. Um, 
just just tell us how many Brighton are going to win by here, Steve, against Tottenham Hotspur. Brighton are going to win three 0 <laughs> Short and sweet on that one. We all, oh, X. What's that? We always oh, know. Um... <laughs> I'll be small, really, but three will do me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Graham Potter wins the league and becomes new Leicester manager, uh, Brad. Oh, no. Spurs are winning three now. Oh, right. Splitting you right no, down the middle. No, no, I'm sick of it. The more, I'm sorry to any Brighton fans out there, but the more Brighton get back in their cage and back down to the lower half of the Premiership and everybody can stop hyping them up, the better. Because they haven't won. They're, their run is ridiculous. Their run is the same sort of form we were in two seasons ago where people were questioning how Leicester lost so many games but we're still in the top five. It's, it's No, it's just awful. They're an awful side that aren't good enough for this end of the Premiership. Get them where they belong. Come on, Spurs. I'll never say that again. And somebody may somebody may say where, where you should put the Brighton Rock, Brad. But Brighton have uh, have just had three draws: a nil nil against Leeds, a one one against West Ham, and a one one with Southampton. Spurs. Well, we know their match is off tomorrow. Uh, the 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 Europa Conference League match is off. Um, fingers crossed for all all concerned that they'll be well enough to to play this on Sunday. Uh, but they're, they're, they're on a run of three wins at the moment. 2-1 Leeds, 2-0 Brentford, 3-0 Norwich. Um, like I say, I don't know who's going to be well, who's not going to be well. But I'm, I'm actually going to have this as a draw. Because it's at so Brighton. It's, it's, you the, thing that is, the thing that gets me, right, is how can they hmm. call these games off when they've got all big massive squads? Surely they can get 12, 14 players out of the, the players they've got. What's the point of having big squads if they're yes. not going to play the players? So I really, mean, all... they should play, they should play it. Yeah, we we all. Um, well, I don't know for you for you, but Premier League, you, you name a twenty-five man squad, don't you? Yeah. So you know, if you take in sort of the eleven that you would start in off that, that leaves you fourteen players. So that's that's a team and three subs. And you can it probably bring maybe more, bring yeah. a couple up against uh, from the youth team as well. So it, you know it is a good point, you know. And this is why I think you know. And I, I can't, I don't use injuries as excuse this this season because we've got a big squad now, and we've got some. You know, I look at our bench sometimes, and I go, "Wow," you know. And I think when you get the big clubs moaning about they haven't got the big squad, it's like. Crocodile tears, really. Do you know what I mean? But, but yeah, no, but, I, I mean, you, could, you could argue there, though, Chris, that like you've just said, sorry to interrupt, but like you just said, you take out the entirety of a first team. It's all well and good saying that these certain clubs have got a, a 25 man squad, but let's 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 put that in the, the shoe on the other foot, as I say. If we don't have a Marty, Soyunchu, Evans, Casper, you know, Castagne, Ricardo. Vardy, Madison, Tillemans, Barnes and Lutman, are we really expecting, are we really going to sit here and say, oh yes, well now we've got to play Dewsbury Hall and four or five reserve players and Ward and Vestergaard and Bertrand and a right back from the under 23s, two strikers from the under 23s, maybe one with Dakar up front. And then we've got to pull out our bench with under 18s because we haven't got enough we can call up for the under 23s. I do kind of get both sides of the argument, but I am yeah. in favour of the game. When you're losing this many players, given everything that's going on, I think it's only right that you call off a game like this because all that happens is, is then mm. you're asking a team to travel lightweighted and you don't know if someone hasn't got a sign for it. Maybe they haven't quite contracted it yet. And then if they go and mm. play that game, then you're not just affecting the 13 players that have it, you're infecting the squad. Yeah. Play I mean, two points, two oh, points oh, on oh, that oh, one. Just... I'm sorry to interrupt. What, so why is it acceptable when all these big clubs in the early rounds of all the cup rounds play a weakened team? Yeah. And, that's no, and no one stays yeah. anything? Yeah. Because, you know... I mean, that, that, that's their prerogative. They're not being forced yeah. to do that. They're doing that themselves. No, if, that, if, if that team is good enough in the manager's eyes to go out and play because they've drawn Shrewsbury at home in the FA Cup, 
then they would be good enough to play in the Premier League or, or Europe. I mean, the point you made there, Brad, two points to come back to on that, and I, I do get what you're saying. First point is that the team would probably be, play better than the ones that were out injured from the names you mentioned, from the way we've well, yeah. been playing. So stick, you know, the under-18s, you know, stick them all out because they can beat Villa um, <laughs> who are the cup holders in that level. And also, you're not necessarily going to get all you, you know, of those seven players, it might only be three that are actually starters, if you like. You no, know, true. Um, but we know, you know, we know, you, you, and at the end of the day, it's, exactly. it's really difficult. And I don't like the fact that the comparison is, oh, well, they'll play the kids against Shrewsbury Town. Well, most of their teams, most of the teams that they put out against a team like Shrewsbury Town are players that are on loan at clubs like Shrewsbury Town or higher, so they should beat them. This is a big European competition. I do not. If I'm a manager of a club and I've got 13 first, a mixture of first team and backup players out injured and it's a majority of first team players and it's a crucial European tie and I'm given the option to postpone the game because of the critical situation my club's in, I'm snapping the hand off and taking it. I'm sorry, it's not a comparable argument for me. If Leicester are playing Shrewsbury Town in the club and we play uh, Bonte Campbell, Dewsbury Hall, Vestergaard and Bertrand, go for it because they should be able to beat Shrewsbury Town the Cup. If you're telling me Napoli in the Europa League and we haven't got seven or eight, of you know, them seven players are your Vardis, your Tillemans, your Madisons, your, your, your it, Evans. It and your I don't want to take Vardy. a European game. He didn't start Vardy in the last game though, did he? No, but again, Steve, though, that's still my, my point still is if, if it's Vardy, Nacho and, and Dakar, we have no strike force. That's already three out of the seven it could be. That's my point. My point is if it's Shrewsbury Town, I, I, I understand they should still be able to play because them calibre of players are probably going out on loan to clubs with the greatest respect of either Shrewsbury's level or higher in a European game for both for Tees and Spurs and Leicester and Napoli to put the two in contentions. If I'm offered as Leicester manager... To say, look, we understand that you're missing 90% of your first team due to a COVID outbreak. We've spoke to Napoli. They're happy to postpone the game. Do you want it? I'm going to take. I'm, I'm going to rip their arm off for it. I don't want to go into a game that's so crucial to my club in European competition and not have Vardy, Dakar and Nacho available, let alone four others. I know we don't know the names, but I'm trying to like put it in comparison from, from their perspective to ours, if you know what I mean, like the comparison of how it affects. I think as well, you've got to consider what and where the game is. I mean, yeah. you know, if, if it's abroad, then, you know, you've got to think of the fans and the travelling. And But, you know, you, you look at Man City. I mean, you know, Man City in the in the English Super Cup, a.k.a. the, the Charity Shield. I mean, they, they, they announced that they weren't sending a strong team down, at, you know, first of all, and there was a lot of youngsters in there. And their fan base, you know, it, it was half empty, their end of the stadium, because their fans couldn't, well, we're here again, we couldn't be bothered to travel down and watch the youngsters. But it's OK to put the youngsters out in that game, in a Wembley TV spectacular, the, the game that kicks the season off. But hang on, we've got a few injuries and we can't play this game. There's, there's arguments on both sides. I can definitely see both sides. Yeah. But I must admit, I do, I do err on the side of, I think you've got to go... As Steve said, you know, and, and look and say, right, can you put a team out? Because you've picked yeah. these 25 players and you say those 25 players are um, good enough for your Premier League squad this season. Now, if you then yeah, come back to me and go, no, I've got two goalkeepers both out. Mm. I must have, I've only got one goalkeeper. Then you've got an argument. And I know I'm not sure which team it is, but one team has just been granted... Uh, dispensation to sign a goalkeeper because uh, of, of injuries and they haven't got anybody fit. So I guess then I would get it. Yeah. Because, you've, got like same, you say, you know. you've got the same problem now, though, where you know the fans are going there and they're saying that Smoykel should be out the team. Now, he's been playing not so well for the last few weeks mm. and you've had Ward, everybody's you know mentioning Ward. So why isn't he not playing? Yeah. Why is he not playing then? Why is he keep playing Smoykel? And I think that's a problem you've got at the moment. Is that you could send Leicester over there with the front three we've got now and not play two of them, but the way they're playing at the moment, the three are not doing it anyhow. So mm. why not give somebody a chance? But what's the point of having a twenty-five man squad if you're not going to use them? 
And yeah. I think when I go back to my playing days when you only had one substitute, it made it made things better because it, 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 it's a leveller. Mm. You know, you got about Liverpool, you go about Liverpool, you go about Man City. Why are they always at top? Because of the quality of the players they've got. But when they don't play them, it's a bit more of a leveller. And I think that's where football needs to be. It needs to be on a level ground where, you know, you look forward to the. the the not so good teams beating the big boys, but mm. I can't understand now because you've still got the same squads. What's the point of a January transfer window? Do you yes. know what I mean? You, yes, you're not bringing yeah. one or two players in, and you, you're leaving four to five out, which have not had a game anyhow. No, so Terry's just why Terry's just saying here he's actually naming some of the players that we know. Yeah, we know Tillemans is well enough and he should be playing Rene because Rene was asking if James Justin, I don't think James Justin is, is fit enough. He had a bit of a setback. Tillemans has traveled, Itchy Perez and Amarty not, and Luckman not apparently. Um, well, there's a few we know though, you know. So again, you've got um, Inacho. Would he have got on anyway? Perez, Amartya, I feel sorry for, because I think he should have been brought back in and Luckman not been playing well. Like I say, I can just see with Leicester, him starting the likes of, say, the Jewsbury Halls uh, and, and, the, and the Luke Young, uh, the young uh, Luke Thomas uh, and, and just going on and winning it. But that, that, that's, uh, that's for tomorrow night and we'll all know that, as I say. I've, I've, I've got 10 pairs of underwear already and raring to go for tomorrow night. And I think I might just need them. So, yeah, back to... Um, if you send the youngsters out and they do get the result, right, what would your comments be if you drop some more for the next game in the league? It'd be harsh. Very harsh. I've always believed if you've put in the performance and, and, and win the game, you've earned the right to start the next game. At least keep it going. I really would, Steve. You know, you know and I know that you wouldn't do that. You go back to no, no, we I would, I would, but I know you're right in saying that he wouldn't do that. You've you're right. But I think if you if you as a youngster, you know, I mean Kieran Dewsbury Hall will be playing this season, know that he's subject to injury, being eased into the team. You know, and so he knows that as soon as um, you know, as, as soon as Tillemans come back, would you then not drop Dewsbury Hall to fit Tillemans in the squad? Yes, anybody. You were all going to say yes, we would. Of course, we would. And I think the youngsters understand that. And you say to the youngsters, right, this is your chance. Go out and prove what you can do. And you know, you know, it's not going to be long term because once Tillemans and uh, and all these players are back. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be coming back in. Uh, but I think, I think as youngsters, it would hurt. But it's a harsh, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's yeah. a life lesson, isn't it? You know, it's a. Yeah, and I think this day and age, you're you're a young when you're a youngster in football, especially if you're doing as well as Dewsbury Hall has been doing since he's been, you know, injected mm. into the first team. Is if he has a good performance tomorrow but doesn't play Sunday, he's not going to go, well, there's another eight months till I play. He's going to know that, you know, bearing in mind, if, if Madison suddenly drops off the board again or Tillemans doesn't quite get himself back or, or under fire in the next couple of games, that he's going to be there to either come yeah. off the bench and impact the game or, or potentially get his start quicker than he would have done a few years and, ago. And I think the word we need to... To remember him, we'll move on now in a second because we, we've still got the three games to go. Yes, but yes. just just quickly to say the the word that we need to remember is squad. That these players mm. are part of a squad. They'll know yes. they'll come in and go out, and they'll get their chance when they're. Um, it's like Hamza, you know, he could have left, and you either say yes, you know, you've not given me the chances, I want to leave. Or I'm happy doing this and still being at Leicester where I might get more games. But uh, there we go. So, um, Burnley, West Ham, Steve. The Battle of the Clarets. Yep. Going for Burnley on this one, purely because they're at home. Wow. Uh, so, I think they're due a win. Uh, and that's purely why I'm going for them. They're due a win and they're at home. So, that's the reason I'm going for them. 
But Burnley at home, it is a, it is one of those places you don't want to go on a cold winter's night, isn't it? I mean, the the wind oh, comes yeah. in, and 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 the away end is absolutely awful. I think it's still wooden. Uh, Ten points, Brad Burnley, along with Newcastle and Norwich. Um, they, they got that win over Brentford, but then three draws and a, and a loss to Newcastle. I mean, you know. <sighs> If, if if I think a lot, I mean Dan the Burnley fan, you know, he, even he, I think he's resigned to them possibly going down this year. Um, I, I, I uh, for me, I can't say anything other than the West Ham win with their last couple of results. Which way would you go, Brad? See, I, I can't, I can't see anything more than a West Ham win. But there's a reason, and I know you did a show on it not too long about Chris that was comparing the West Ham of today compared to the Leicester team that, that went on to win the Premier League. And the biggest difference we're seeing at the moment between them is because they're both, both managing to beat teams that they're not expected to beat. But yeah. their, their results when they've dropped points have been against the likes of a, a, a team like a Burnley. They yeah. put up a rocking defence, 10 men behind the ball, part the boss, uh, and they, they struggle to break them down. So I... And this is one of them games where I actually think Burnley get a draw out of it. And I'm going to go for a draw. I'm going to say that Burnley probably rob a, a nil-nil or a one-all draw. It just wouldn't surprise no. me if this is where West Ham drops some vital points. No, after the I, 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 know, I know totally uh, what, what you're saying there. Um, but I've got to stick with what I did in the long ball. And, and I think it will, it will be close. But West Ham have got that knack as Leicester had of getting the 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 the, the, the last minute goals. The big game of the weekend, uh, the early kickoff or well, the earlier kickoff, two o'clock, I think it is, uh, on Sunday on Sky Sports. Um, the mighty Leicester City welcome the royal family of football clubs, the richest club in the world. Um, Eddie Howe is he the man to, to sort of give them that boost because they could be the richest club. And not be in the top tier, Steve. I think uh, Eddie Howe is going to find his feet soon. I think um, the way he was talking over the weekend, uh, the way that the uh, match of the day broke down Newcastle's attacking three, um, I'm, I'm worried for Leicester uh, with that attacking three. Uh, I think they'll, uh, you know, they'll, they'll cut us to pieces, especially uh, with. You know, the ladder on the left. And I think um I think result tomorrow night's gonna be a lot to do with it. If we go yeah. there if we go there and like we don't get a result, I think that could be harmful. And I think if we do go there and do get a result, I think that could also be harmful. Mm. But I think um the way they broke down Newcastle's attacking three, um I think they're gonna cause Leicester's back for a problem. Yes. So I'm going to go for uh, I'm going to go for a Newcastle win on this one. Ooh. Let me put you in there. Uh, I'm hopefully your your uh, reverse psychology might come into effect there, that, Steve. That's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Brad, it, it's you know, true what, know it's true what Steve says though. You got to worry for Leicester. Yeah, I do. I really do worry. I worry for Leicester. I worry for Brendan's job over the next two games. I worry for the form. Um, I worry about quite a lot in my life in general. I don't need to worry that Leicester are giving me at the moment. Um, <laughs> I was. I know what I said to you before Steve joined us backstage, but I'm going to reverse psychology. My reverse psychology. I'm not going to do a Steve line next as I call it. It's called Steve Linex, mate, where we go against <laughs> Leicester in hopes that they win. But I'm going to leave you with that job just for another week and my art has started kicking my head in for even debating it. So I am going to go for a Leicester win, but I am as, bad, as confident as that as I am winning the lottery tonight and I haven't done the lottery. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will agree with you. Um, I think it is the one club that's going to spend money in January, and we know in January that you you pay more for players than you probably need to um, because they're usually desperate uh, desperate signings. And you know, as soon as Newcastle not you know they, oh it's Newcastle that want the player, 
they're going to be adding another five million, but it's not going to bother them. They've got the money. They're just going to go out on whatever they, whoever they've got to buy to uh, to, to to keep them up. But I can't go. I, I I think this, therefore, because of that, I think this is a, a good time for Leicester to play them while they are still new. Um, they did get their first win, uh, and it was against Burnley, but I think you, you've got to say it was their first win, and it was against Burnley, who are, let's be honest with you, as awful as they are. So um, I am I am going for a Leicester win, and I'm, I'm I'm feeling a little bit confident to be honest with you. I can see us getting a win tomorrow and a win at the weekend, and um, the the men in white coats are coming to take me away, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I really hope they do, but you yeah, know, it's 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 all down again to Brendan Rodgers and what and what what for not formation or what team he picks, but what tactics he plays. And yes, that, that, that's just a worrying thing for me. The tactics seem so wrong every Saturday or midweek game. But, but again, this changing. is why this is why you know we love having you on because yes, you you played for Leicester, but you know you you I I just find it hard to go against Leicester because uh, you know um, uh, of the uh, of the fact that I'm a fan. But talk to me about Everton. I mean, they were literally. On a, a horrendous run, uh, Steve. They're in 12th because they managed to sneak a win against Arsenal. But before that, they'd lost three and drawn one. Um, and they're over there at, at Palace, who um, mid-table security, but they've lost three on a row. Yeah, I think they're struggling. I think he's bubbled the burst. Mm. I think he, uh, I think, you know, you could see when he first came in the spring in his step and you could see him stamping his authority on it. But I think they're going to be stale now, and I think uh, clubs are starting to figure out, uh, you know, how they're playing and where they can do them. Um, I don't think Rafa's out of the water yet. Uh, I think yeah. uh, the win done him good, but I can't see him winning this one. So for this one, I'm I'm going to go for a draw. Right, um, it's not a bad shout, Brad. Which way do you see this? Well, Two teams that are a little bit in free fall. Yeah, they are, but Palace have probably been a lot more organised and a lot more unfortunate with their results than Everton. Everton have been drab until they play Banter FC, who hit hit their usual Banter FC form just in time for Rafa to save his job. Because honestly, I I, I mean I I didn't see Liverpool. I, I thought Everton could have played for 190 minutes against Arsenal and won, won that game the Formula on, and then they go and do what they did. But I think that was a little blip on the radar and Crystal Palace will get their form back and they'll end up winning this uh, easily. Crystal Palace, I think they'll bounce back uh, and, and, and do it fine. So I'm going for a Crystal Palace win, mate. Right. So I'm be, I'm just being included in every single comment between you and Bazza at the moment. <laughs> it's like uh, no, it's, just, doing my, it's going off all over it. Yeah, just thinking like just just don't you're not you know it, it, you're dealing with uh, with Brad. Just message Brad direct for God's sake, you know. Um, I've gone. For, oh, I, I get annoyed when I get tagged in, uh, and we've got a couple of people that just sort of tag. For the fun of tagging, they, 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 nothing on the tweet. They just literally tag everybody, and then everybody's liking it and forwarding it on, and <laughs> your notifications are just full of uh, of total and utter shite. Um, Scott's gone for an Everton win here. Um, I, I've seen this, Scott, that Brendan said he will scrap the idea of zonal marking and go back to man. Um, Jeff says Palace to win this one. I'm just looking what I've gone for, and I have actually got to agree with you, Steve. I've gone for a draw as well. I can't call it. It it could literally go either way. So, um, yeah, there we go. And, and those are the matches. So, um, we were totally and utterly split across the Brentford-Watford game. We couldn't agree at all. Uh, we don't think Wolves are going to get anything out of Manchester City. And sorry, Arsenal fans. The Gunners are going to be firing blanks against Southampton. Hey, so I did there. Uh, hey. 
Yeah. Uh, Chelsea to beat Leeds, but Steve thinks Leeds will, will spring a surprise. Um, Brad thinks Villa will spring a surprise against Liverpool. Uh, Steve just totally lost it with Norwich. I don't know. I don't know whether he's been drinking or not. I'm telling you. Uh, again, we split across the Brighton Spurs result and the Burnley West Ham result. And um, Leicester City, Steve, and I love the fact that I say that uh, that you say it as it is. And uh, but me and Brad have, have gone for Leicester, and both of us, me and Steve, think a draw, but a Palace win for Brad, guys. Maybe this week is the week when we get every single one of us gets every single one of these right. So fingers crossed. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get the Norwich one right for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you, if, if Norwich win, I'll come on next week in my underwear. I'll tell you. <laughs> no, I won't come on that week. I don't come on that week if you end up doing that. So definitely. That's not, not being clipped. Now. Yeah, I, I, I'll do my camera like that. <laughs> so you got hello. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, uh, let's put it back. So next week, the preview show. I think it's going to be a bit longer because we've got two games next week. So uh, it will be a double, a double whammy. I think on that. So I'll confirm that over the weekend. Steve, thanks very much as always, mate. It's a pleasure having you on, and You're thanks welcome. very much. Oh, hang on a second. Um, Scott, Chris, has Steve had two choices on the Southampton game? Is he down for a draw and a Southampton win? Let's have oh, a look. Well, here. I'm looking myself now. You are, yes. Um, and that's how he's catching you up, Chris. You've been giving him double points. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, I, one of those should be me. Um, what did I go for Arsenal Southampton? I went for the draw. Ah, so that's yeah, you put an S instead of a C. I did. C. There we go. There we go. Unfortunately, it picks up the last time you type something in. So, yeah, anyway. Like you say, that's probably why Steve is doing That's probably why you're winning, Brad. Let's be honest. <laughs> do it up, mate. Do it up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to start doctoring this. Do, do, do either of you two write down the, your actual choices? I'll screenshot it, mate. Yeah, but I can go in and check. Oh, do you? Oh, so yes, I could have gone yeah, in. And yes, <laughs> hey, Dick Dastardly of the Prediction uh, League show, uh, am I? Steve, mate, have a great weekend and rest of the week and stay safe. Watch out for this new uh, new thing. No, no, no nippy to number 10 for a drinks party. I've had my uh, booster job today, so... Oh, nice one, nice one. Um, I hope um, you. I hope you're well. I had it, and it knocked me for six for a couple of days. I'm just so I hope you... the reaction now, so see what happens. Brilliant. I think, brilliant. That's, why, that's, I think that's why. uh I've gone for Norwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excuses coming out already, Brad. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, that's how it is. He's had that one Norwich. He's had that one Watford win against Manchester United, and now, and now the okay. excuses are there. Next next week it'll be sod it. It's Christmas, won't it, Steve? This, this, this is going to be okay this year. I'm, I'm happy with Norwich. We, we will see. We will see next week, mate. We will see you next week. Steve, thanks very much, mate. All the best. Take care, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Good night. See you, bud. Good, good night. Thank you. Take good care. Night. Cheers. Thanks to Steve there. As always, a absolute pleasure to have him on. Uh, we've finally got somebody on that speaks sense. Ah, yes, I always speak sense, Chris. I always do. I'm, I'm the sensible speaker of the group behind Craig. <laughs> Brad, I think Chris is fixing this, mate. <laughs> hey, how can I be fixing it when I'm actually not putting myself down for yeah. one of the results? <laughs> see, don't worry, Scott. What I do is I wait for him. I see him typing in the last letter of who it is, and I just do this with my phone, and I screenshot it. I've already got this saved, so don't worry. Justice will be done if he tries to adopt to the point, Scott. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, that's the only way I think I'm going to win. <laughs> Mate, I'm gonna. We're we're seeing a lot of each other this week again. Uh, tomorrow, yeah. Friday, and Sunday. Good luck with uh, with with Barry or whatever he's called on uh, your your Twitter one. Um, yeah, I will do, mate. I'm just organising that now after the show. I've got to go and look at the link, check some things out, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy week all round. I'm book solid for a, for a fair few days, to say <laughs> the least. Brilliant, brilliant. 
I will see you uh, tomorrow night post match. Fingers crossed. Yes, fingers crossed. Everything crossed. We'll see how it goes. Yes, legs crossed, but that might be for a completely different reason. <laughs> All right, mate. Have a good one. Take care. Right. See you later. See Bye. you tomorrow. Thanks for everything. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, thanks to Brad there as well. Great show. Great to have Steve on. Uh, always, always nice. And don't forget, this show is being uh, sponsored by him. Matty Cap, I believe it was. Had a shot. Had a shot. That, that's 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 getting there to start, isn't it? That's getting the YouTube. <laughs> Had a that, shot. That... <laughs> Indeed. Thanks to everybody for joining in as well. We'll see you tomorrow night about quarter past ten. And then it will be the post-match show for Leicester Napoli. Worried, nervous, tense nervous headache. <sighs> this is Leicester. We should be used to it. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news. Come on, you foxes!